sex. And what is it for? For insight, we're bringing in Selena Gomez to tell us all the details. I completely lied about that. But I got your attention. And I tricked the algorithms, which makes me a sexy genius. Hey, it's God's comic Brad Stein, and I gotta ask you the question you've been waiting for. Have you ever wondered what sex was for? (laughs) Of course not. That's why God invented me, to answer the questions you've never even asked. You know what's become the epitome and recreation for post-truth America? Going to the beach, right? Camping cornhole? Well, close. No, it appears to be sex. Conservatives and progressives see sex differently. Conservatives see sex morally. Progressives see sex on HBO. Let me ask you this. If someone asked you today what sex was for, what would you say? As a matter of fact, comment down below. Let's talk about it. But let me tell you. The purpose of sex, from the progressive point of view, is simply pleasure. So, have you ever considered the fact that humans are the only beings in existence? in the universe that separate purpose from pleasure. You see the sex for pleasure presupposition? It's wrong. (laughs) There's many things our bodies find pleasurable, but the pleasure is a wonderful byproduct to the actual purpose of the act itself. For example, humans find pleasure in eating, yet we never consider the purpose of eating to keep Krispy Kreme in business. No, the purpose of eating is so you don't eventually die. Now, some people find pleasure in running, which is sick and twisted and pathetic. But who am I to judge? But the purpose of running is apparently either for exercise, to catch a train, or to flee from someone chasing you with a ball-peen hammer. Parents find pleasure in watching our kids in a preschool play, even though the purpose of attending the play is to avoid being the target of their therapy sessions when they reach adulthood and are lamenting that their parents never showed up to watch their interpretation of a rutabaga in their tribute to funny-sounding vegetables school play extravaganza. But conservatives and progressives also see humans differently as well. See, the progressive sees humans as glorified animals that got too big for their britches and became self-aware. You see, animals have sex, but they do it by instinct for one reason only, to make more animals. We've never observed wild rhinos strapping on rubbers. This is a problem for the neo-Darwins, by the way, though they usually have a hard time grasping that if evolution was about survival of the species, then why are humans constantly trying to have sex without having children? Hey, we want our cake without the calories. Animal's instinct is to procreate, whereas humans have a similar desire, but we can choose to indulge in the act without the ramification. Interestingly, even progressive call this birth control or reproductive rights. So they're admitting that sex makes babies, which kind of throws a monkey wrench in the abortion isn't killing a human debate because even though it's pleasurable, even if it hurt, we'd still do it because it's the only way we can make babies. Otherwise, we'd run out of the new people that could come into the earth and teach us that sex is for pleasure until babies get in the way. You see, to the sex-driven human, babies are the ultimate buzzkill. This is why for time immemorial, humans have put restraints on sex, yet the progressive's inability to rank restraint over desire renders them unable to articulate and justify their reasons. Outside of that superficial, well, it just feels right. It just feels right. What makes the idea of individual desire defining morality is that it becomes problematic when it begins to become mainstream. See, the conservative mind, borrowing from Christianity as usual, sees sex as, take a deep breath, holy. Listen, sex is to be engaged in with much gusto, completely, 
uninhibited. And yet it is so important that the only limit to its indulgence God puts on it is that it's designed to, trigger warning, be with one man and safe space, one woman who promised it to each other for the rest of their lives. But that can't be right. I'm a guy. Shouldn't the rule be as many women as often as possible until I no longer desire it, which occurs only when I'm in a coma? And even then, I'm not positive. I mean, I'm a dude. As long as my torso's intact, don't count me out. Back to microaggression. One man, one woman for life. Under those specific conditions, sex isn't sex for the sake of sex, but it's an act of giving love at its most intimate, all the while creating the possibility of a child, or to some of you, a clump of cells. That'd be the Latin term. That's why you hear metaphorically terms for the act. You've heard of making love, but it's not, of course, because the love's supposed to be there in the first place, so should have been called giving love. Or how about we slept together? Well, that never made sense because sleeping is literally the last thing I want to do when sex is a possibility. Maybe it should have been staying awake together. Sleeping will come immediately afterwards, though, I promise. Again, I'm a guy. The holiness aspect is completely lost, of course, on this new secular America that has forgotten our Judeo-Christian ethics that taught us were made in the image of God. So, procreation is our duty in being fruitful and multiplying more of God's creation through an act of our own will. It's supposed to be a celebration of the privilege God entrusted us with, and consequently, it comes with a perimeter and a price, as all privileges do. Not quite the, what the progressive had in mind in his model, a self-absorbed life is not worth living. To pretend the temptation for pure hedonism isn't there for all of us? That'd be untrue, but having recreational sex is kind of like, I don't know, making a sled out of a Rembrandt. Sure, it's thrilling right all the way down the hill, but in the act... You're destroying a masterpiece. Freud considered pretty much every human act motivated by repressed sexuality. Don't you hear that? All? Oh, your sexuality is repressed. But as C.S. Lewis pointed out, repression is subconscious, and there's a difference between repression and suppression, which is the conscious control of one's impulses. The progressive is made an art form out of unlimited behavioral choices and then used their judges to annoy its constitutionality. Again, Lewis, brilliant analysis was summed up by stating this type of disciplined expectation regarding our sexual urges is so difficult and so contrary to our instinct that either the rule is wrong or maybe our sexual instinct, as it now is, is wrong. Trust me. I'm a conservative Christian, and yet if suddenly, given the go-ahead by God for sex, anytime, anywhere, with anybody, by the time I was through it, I'd have Ron Jeremy blushing. He'd be taking notes. But I suppress for what I consider a noble commitment to my wife and to provide my daughter what she should expect from her future husband. So, to be sexually liberated, progressive, where you will cry, more condoms! Me and mine will cry, more character. Both notions are protected speech, but at least ours doesn't come with the complimentary vial of penicillin. This is God's comic. Join the movement, because remember, whether you like what I'm saying or not, I don't care. PC free is liberty. And if this is really being too difficult for you to grasp, Put a helmet on. Or a condom. Hey, I hope you enjoy what I'm putting out there. And if you do, like and subscribe to my channel. And you know what? I know what you're saying to yourself. Brad, how are we going to survive another day without bringing you into our church or our event to do your straight stand-up comedy that you've been doing so long? It kind of set the bar for what it could look like to be conservative, Christian, and cutting edge. Well... Go to bradstein.com and you can contact me. Well, not me, my people. I think it's always important to have people. And we'll get to set this up. I'll come over to your place, even your backyard.
was a check clear.